it's not going to be a popular it's video. It's not the most enjoyable <laughs> topic. <laughs> ego, ego. I mean, oh, I don't know why what? I'm drawn to it. I don't know. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who wants the end of suffering ah, for all eternity? Ah, you know? so and the end of the physical body too. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Potentially, so, potentially yeah. Potentially. potentially. <laughs> so e ego death. I mean, mm. this group, I believe this group was partly orchestrated uh, out of um, uh, out of um, some kind of alignment with enlightenment. So enlightenment is um, for those who seek, and I, I seek enlightenment. I mean, I don't say that everyone has to be enlightened, but I seek enlightenment. That's that's the thing. So enlightenment is ego death. I mean, full death. That chop not half the ego, keep half your ego, or something like that. So, so it means to fully transcend the ego. Uh, and so it's like the things of uh, when and just to have that intention uh, is to invite extre extreme things to come your way and is to, and is to, is to welcome that. So what is, what is uh, and why do, why, why do I, why, you know, I had a, a near-death spiritual experience, it wasn't that, you know, it was quite nice. Uh, heavenly time in the spiritual, but the one with Muji, where there was great terror to meeting because he was a teacher of enlightenment, that was a white light spiritual experience of, of incredible dimension. So if you have a, a white light spiritual experience, there's the recognition, it says in The Course in Miracles, that if you were to, something like in one of the lessons, it says in The Course in Miracles, imagine the happiest moment you've ever experienced in your life, and times that by a hundred, and times that by a hundred again and you still won't have a clue of what it's like to be in the light of God. That's one of the lessons of God. And when I read that, when I read that, I knew that was the truth. Like there's nothing, there's nothing that can compare in this world of dualistic separation, which can be c compared to the magnitude of being in the infinite light of God. So there's, no, there's nothing here. I mean, who wants to be in a state of infinite light, love and happiness for all eternity? Or who wants, you know, if you, if, you know, the thing is, like, when I sort of say that, for people who've experienced misery their whole life, they don't know what you're talking about, because they think, well, that's what they're used to. But if you've experienced that, if you've experienced uh, high spiritual states, then you won't be satisfied with wanting something, you know, a hundred times lower. You know, so you then automatically, it's like grace starts to pull you to implode your ego because you want to return to the light. You want to return. There's an inbuilt inspiration to shed off all limitation and all fear and all illusion to return to the truth. Now, you know, you know like studying um, two teachers, my two teachers, Dr. Hawkins, who went through the death of the ego, um, Muji, who talks about the burning, let the, bur let the burning happen, you know, i.e. let your ego burn, burn off. So they both more or less say, you know, the, the ego is going to resist and it's going to feel like it's dying. And, you know, for, for me, ego death means, for anyone who feels inspired by that, is to, you know, for each teacher shares their experience to give permission to those who are not sure. Uh, you know, that, that's okay. You know, what is dying? So the thing that, that's, you know, like one of the things that I practice and which I learned, from, I call it the observer or the witnesser. Anyone who goes to the witnesser of thoughts or their body recognizes that internal place, realizes that that which is dying is the ego. So it's safe to let your ego die because the eternal can't die. The, what's witnessed to die is safe to let it die because the witnesser is still not going to be unaffected by that which is dying. So what is dying is limitation or what is dying is the identification with the limited self. So as St. Francis says, it's in dying that one is born to eternal life. So it's in the death of the limited self, it's, the, it's in the death of the identified thoughts and body identification that one recognizes one's eternal nature and one remains in one's eternal nature. Or as St. Francis says, I like to quote St. Francis, what you're looking for is where you're looking from. Mm, I love that. So, 
So, you know, it's even as the thing that is dying, as the ego death arises, the thing that is looking from at the death, that is what you're looking for. So you can let this thing that's dying, die, die off. And you'll remain with what you've really been looking for, which is actually not the thing that you think you think you are, that is dying. Yep. That's like um, Dr. Hawkins says, you cannot experience your own death because when the body dies, you're still there and you just leave the body. Mm -hmm. So the only death that you will experience, if ever you do experience a death, will only be the ego. Yes, yeah. Because the only thing that can die is that that mm -hmm. is limited. So you'll like still be technically alive <laughs> while you're watching something in you die. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, yeah. that's correct. Yeah, yeah. So they're, 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 they're the illusory deaths of, of limitation mm -hmm. uh, going up and up. Um, and uh, so, so this, this group, I mean, and, uh, for me The Course in Miracles is about enlightenment. It is about recognizing that formless, timeless, eternal place within and letting go of the blocks to that. So that's what I mean. So it's like the word ego death brings joy to me. I think, oh, that's fun, you know, I'm waiting, you know, that, that's a great thing. Um, but if you, if you hear it the first time, I don't normally shout it out, it might bring fear to some people. And if you're heavily identified with your ego, it will probably bring up fear because it's the loss of familiarity, it's the loss of uh, fear and separation, it's the loss of limited identification. So that's, you know, it's like, who wants to be free of suffering? <laughs> who wants to be free of suffering for all eternity? Mm. <laughs> you know, um, so it, it's in the identification, it's in the identification of limited that, um, that the creation of duality and, and suffering keeps going. Because if I experience myself as limited or uh, du as, as being in duality, then you know, everything's going to affect me because I'm in separation, being affected by everything else. But when I'm in non-separation, when I'm in the witness or on the non-dual field, then you know, that, that is undiable, unkillable, eternal, can never die is not subject to time or change or anything that passes. So all things that pass and change and are related to time pass within it, but it's not, it doesn't affect it. So that's recognizing, um, that's recognizing, so that would be ego death. Because you can reattach to the, to the limited and then you reattach back into the limited, yeah? What do you do nowadays to go towards that death? So what, what we do, so the witnesser, what you do, yeah, that's your, your, your daily practice, you do the witness. I do, the, I do things, what do I do on a daily witness, sir? Uh, f feel the feelings if necessary. Um, I'm doing a lot of counseling beliefs at the moment, or I've got, you know, I place whatever into the light and love of God, you know, so of anything that seems to be a karmic thing coming up. So those are the things, those are the things that I do. Uh, I listen to Hawkins. Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot as well. Is that ego death? Yes, a good, good thing. Sounds great. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs>